What up guys, Victor here, and like I promised, we are finally in the Bahamas. Well, just about. We're doing a little fishing on our way over there. We're gonna go do something called wreck fishing, which, I don't know, we've never seen them before, but apparently there are these really big uh, sea bass looking things, kind of look like grouper, and we got a giant um, electric reel going down with a combination of squid and bonita belly. We're trying something completely new. We're very excited. We're gonna take it all in, the entire Bahamas experience. You guys are gonna get a very good viewing experience from these videos. So stick around, it's gonna be a good day. We're getting ready to drop down. We're trying to pick up a big grouper right here. Hopefully one around 100 pounds would be awesome. How deep are we at? 2,300 feet. We've got a ways to go. We're at 300 meters right now and counting. We've got a little counter right here letting us know how far down we're going. So you guys saw we have that electric reel and it's not cheating, it's just because when you're fishing this deep of water, it's pretty much impossible to do manual unless you want to spend your entire day actually reeling in that fish. So doing the electric reel is the most effective approach. It's not cheating, it's just it's what you do when you deep drop. This trip would not be possible without this man right here, my good friend Brando Mailman, who shares the same Slovakian genes as me. As you guys see, we're lathered in sunscreen and we are pasty white boys. <laughs> We bake in the sun, but yes, we Brando, do. say what's up. Hello. How's Hello. it going? Hello, YouTube. And thank you for inviting me and Brooke. Yeah, no problem. We got them all drag stalling a little bit here. We got 618 meters to go. Yeah. Try to replace and don't float that 12 pound lead without any trouble. If you guys didn't hear that, Captain Glenn told us that these fish are so big and their air bladders are so big that they'll actually drag the like 15, 20 pound weight up with them. It's a shark. Not what we're after. Dang it. Hey, hey, what kind is that? Crazy looking fish. Look at the team low life status. We're gonna show right eyes. Here. Okay. Look over here, look over here. Alright, Chris, do you wanna touch him? Alright. Ready again? Well that was not the targeted species, so we're headed back to the spot we got uh Captain Glenn's got some numbers, so what we try to do is when we're this deep, we're actually trying to stay around that area or around the number that we are at. So he's constantly putting the boat in and out of gear, putting the electric reel in and out of gear as well. All right guys, so check out these baits. We got a giant, looks like 18 or 20 OLP circle hook. We're not dropping for little stuff. We're not dropping for little deep drop species. We're dropping for big old wreck fish. We got a squid and a bonita trunk on there. We're just kind of waiting for that tap tap and then we just want to set the hook with this drug right here. We just want that circle to go right to the corner. So it's just not really a rush. It's just a nice smooth catch up to the fish. So here's what's going on guys. We are on to the second spot. The wreck fishing did not go as planned. And I got the world famous Captain Glenn right behind me. Infamous. Infamous, Infamous. Captain Glenn. And we are on the second spot. We went a little shallower. Where are we trying yep. to target now? Trying to target queen snapper, silk snapper, yellow eye snapper. Groceries. Groceries. Stopping at Publix. Hey. Yeah. What'd you just catch? I just caught a snapper. I'm so excited. Oh, what kind of snapper? Oh, what you call clean snapper? Clean snapper. Her first one. Yeah, it's my first one. It was a great experience. Oh, 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 oh. No, he's on. He's, he's, he's on. We on. We on. We got groceries in the boat. So what we're doing now is it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's still fun because what we're doing is we're dropping down very, very deep, and you gotta use these electric reels, otherwise, I don't know about you, but I do not want to hang crank in 600, all the way up to 2,000 feet of line when you're deep dropping. So we got these badass, uh, big Daiwa electric reels, and you have this button here, and what you gotta do is, if you're fishing like five, six, seven, eight pounds of lead, you drop it all the way down to the bottom, you got a giant chicken rig, and these queens, yellow eye snapper, all these things, kinda just like, it's a very subtle tap from the rod and you kinda gotta let it feed it to him and you gotta know when to put it in gear and to wind him up. And we know he's on because every once in a while you'll see a bunch of little taps right there on the rod. So what, we're not sportsman fishing right now, we're trying to put meat in the boat. We're trying to get really good deep water, cold water snapper, which are gonna be very tasty. Slippery Nick. Golden tile. Golden tile. Golden tile. That's a tiny one, isn't it? It's real small. It's playable. This giant trophy catch. I never caught a golden tile, only grazed. 
ice cold. You guys have seen us catch gray tilefish before. Now this guy is a golden tile. See the coloring on him? He's got that yellow fin, blue green back. And if you touch them, they really are super cold. It's crazy because if you think there's like no sun, well, there's barely any sunlight down there, I guess, if there is any sunlight. So there's a stomach blown up. It's in the 50s. It's just letting us know we're coming into the Bahamas. Quarantine flag. So you guys just saw the yellow quarantine flag. We are reeling up the deep drop rods. Brooks is over there. We got kind of stunk deep dropping. We got two um, queen snapper, that shark, and then the one golden tile fish. So it is definitely hot out of here. There is no wind. So we're going to go clear into customs. And uh, I don't know what it's on the game plan next, but you guys are about to find out. Guys, this is a perfect example of how much meat goes to waste. This is Adam, right? Yes, sir. Adam, say hi to YouTube. Hi, what's happening? How you doing? So you're gonna make fish tea? Yes, sir. What is that exactly? Little fish tea, take it, season it on the sour, little pepper. You know, then you get your onion, your herbs, you put your herbs in, then little sweet pepper, little sweet pepper, then carrots, little orange potato and stuff like that. You know. Put your top on it, let you boil up for 15 20 minutes. You got fish tea, man. It's awesome. like a soup? Yeah. It's like a soup. Like Do you eat soup. it with rice or anything? You can eat it with rice, with bread, rice? whatever you choose to eat it with. Yeah. Whatever you know. You guys see how much waste this is? Uh, someone came out here. We're at Blue Marlin Cove Resort. Let me and right up this. It's a Warsaw grouper. <laughs> it's a Warsaw grouper. And somebody flayed him up, got the flays, and then add him over here. He took the uh, the head and a lot of the stuff that people would neglect, but I guarantee you this is probably the best tasting part of the fish right here. We got all the head meat. It looks like he's got the tail meat, some of the belly meat. He's gonna make some local Bahamian fish tea, which if you guys got a recipe for, comment below, because I'd love to try some of this stuff. Adam's gonna show you guys how much meat you can get off of the waste of someone's catch. He's got two bagfuls of premium top quality meat. Yes, sir. That's the Bahamian way. That's the right way right there. Check these guys out. These are all conch shells, which I think we're going to be doing, right? Kyle? Yeah, we should go do some conking and stuff. I think we'll go get plenty. I think we're going to get some meat tomorrow. Yeah. You've done it before. I've never done it. It looks exciting. Yeah, it's, not, it's pretty <laughs> fun. You just go down, you pick them up, and then the hardest part's cleaning them. Yeah. They know how to clean them so good. You watch those guys clean them versus us. It's another world watching them clean Oh, them. yeah. Locals always know how to do it the best. But look at all these conch shells. Hopefully, we get in the meat with these guys at some point in the trip. So what we're doing is Kyle and I are walking out towards, there's like a little jetty, the entrance to the marina here. And I'm going to just see if I could hook up to a tarpon, mangrove, um, jack, anything really. I'm just trying to get my line tight. Everyone's out by the pool. We uh, cracked open some beers. The first day we're kind of just relaxing. We did some deep, drop, deep dropping as you guys saw. It wasn't too productive. Here are the people saying they see the big tarpon school crossing. Yep. I think that would be really bonefish cool too. They've tagged bonefish. Me and Kyle were just talking about it right now, guys. They've tagged bonefish before in the Bahamas and they found them on the East Coast, which is crazy to think that something like a bonefish would make that crossing. That's yeah. Incredible. Like a tarpon I could totally see, but a bonefish, not so much. So I had a spool tech on here. I'm gonna switch it to a DOA because everything in the ocean eats two things, which is a glass minnow and a shrimp. So I'm switching to that because we had this guy on in case we saw any dolphin while deep dropping. Swing around this dock right here. Oh no, we're doing it. You want to hand me the rod and I'll go? Absolutely. It's crazy how these beaches are completely different than ours. There's no like actual, it's kind of like the Keys. There's no actual like beach beach. beach. Yeah, it's just rock and yeah. and... You can't surf these beaches. You can't sit out here and tan and lay. This is, ain't, this is definitely not a spring break beach, <laughs> that's for sure. No, not by any means. Check this out. Look at all these sea fans just washed up here. Oh I wonder if this is gets covered underwater during the tide line or if these just wash up. I mean, I'd have to say they have to get covered in the yeah. tide line at some point, like maybe on the full moons. Yeah. Right, we'll bust right there. Oh, woo! Almost died right there. I'm glad you went down nice and soft. Yeah, that was actually a very graceful landing, I'd that say. Was. Not much current going through here. That little thing, whatever it was, tried to eat it right there. Little parrot fish or
You see him? He keeps coming out of the rock shooting for it. Oh, I got him. You got him. What is it? Oh, it's a little grouper. Sick. No way. <laughs> It's, it's a little, a little micro, block, it's a little, right? No, it's a little strawberry grouper. Little strawberry I th grouper. I believe it's a little strawberry grouper. I mean, I know there's a lot of grouper species in the <laughs> Bahamas, but look at that. That's so He awesome. was just chilling in that rock right there. He devoured it. It goes to show everything in the ocean eats a shrimp. That's right. Let him go. Go back to his hole. Thanks for watching the video guys, and if you want to see this giant redfish caught playing on the screen right now, look forward to that day two video coming very soon this week. And if you guys have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Join the Land Shark Nation if you want to see more badass videos like this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, stay salty my friends, and I'll see you in that next one.